In today's video, we're going to look at the All Maybe LCD USB wall charger. This is a two channel, 24 watt wall charger. Puts out 2.4 amps per channel at 5 volts. And uh, we'll charge two devices at once. We're going to put this thing through its paces. We're going to charge stuff up with it. We're going to overload this thing severely, see if we can blow it up. And we're even going to tear this one down and show you how well it's built. Let's check it out. I have another official unboxing to do here, another unit that's factory sealed. This is a, a quick charger. Let's check this little one out and see what we've got here. So what we have here is we have a dual port, 2.4 amps each, to travel charger, plug flips out, you plug it in, it's got a little LCD display on here. So to test the unit, let's power it up. The unit powers up, we've got two ports on here, tells me my charging voltage, charging um, amps, and how many milliamp hours has been sent to the ports. I've got a couple charging cables here, a couple cell phones. I'll start out with the Motorola piece of junk. We'll plug that one into port number one and see what happens. And it's telling me that port number one is now charging. And the phone's turning on because it was turned off. And we are charging at 1.65 amps. Remember, it's 2.4 per port. Second port I'm going to plug in here. And I'll plug that into my Samsung Galaxy S9. So this is a USB-C cord. This phone's already on, so when I plug this in, and it's charging at 1.74 amps, and if I press the button here, it will switch back and forth between port number one and port number two. So, let's let these things charge up for a while and see what the capacity is. Now, neither one of these phones are dead, so they're not gonna take a full charge. It's not gonna take that long to charge these up, but let's just see how long it does take and what how much power this little charger puts in. This is kind of cool because it tells you how many milliamp hours the device is taking. And so this one so far is taking 34 milliamp hours so far, charging at 1.39 amps, 5.16 volts for port number one. Port number two also 5.16 volts. This one's taking 26 milliamps. This one's charging at 1.74 amps. Right, so the the charge circuit on the Samsung is capable of, of higher current. So I'll we'll just let this thing there charge up for a bit and we'll check back in a bit and see how it's performing. And it tells me that it's 41 minutes to fully charged on the uh, the Samsung and it's at 72%. So um, or 72%, about 41 minutes until this one's fully charged. I'm just covering up personal information on the phone here. So um, we'll let that display go out. And this one here, well this phone is not on right now I don't think. At 77% is what this one's sitting at. So we'll just let the phones charge for a bit and uh, we'll see how long it's uh, taking to charge. It's 7 o'clock right now or 7.01, so they've been going now for about a minute. So um, we'll just see how long it takes to charge these up. Okay, we've been going for about 23 minutes now. As you can see, battery number one, charging current's down to point, uh, 0 0.56 amps. It's taking 390 milliamps. And on here we are at 90% charged. The other phone over here, if I we're at 91% charge on this one, it says about 19 minutes. So, and if we look at battery number two, we're down to uh, 0.93 amps, but we've taken 588 milliamp hours so far on this one. So, as you can see, because the S9's uh, got a much faster charging circuit than this Motorola piece of junk, um, the newer phones, this one supports USB C. Now it also supports the higher voltage charge, which this is only a 5.2 uh, 5 volts, but it will take the higher amp, so it's still going to charge a lot faster than uh, something like this. 
So I missed uh, the fully charged on this, but it's, it's now fully charged. And you'll see, fully charged. So the battery took 791 milliamp hours. You can see that the current is down to like 0.19 because it's now gone into to sleep mode. This one here is uh, also probably fully charged. Nope, 97%, not quite. Been going for 51 minutes now. This phone's almost there. It's down to uh, 0.34 amps. See how long it takes for the full charge on this one. And then we're gonna put this thing through a few more tests. We're going to uh, overload this thing and see what we can do with it. Now you can see this one here, it's, it's charging at zero because I've unplugged it. It's still got 700, it still shows 792 milliamp hours. So if I wanted to plug something else in, unless I actually unplug the power from this, that'll just keep counting up. So if we want to reset this, we push, we uh, click the button twice. And that resets that to zero. So now I can charge another device and measure how much power went into the device. I'm curious to see what's going to happen if I short circuit number two. Now this, of course, this, this, this cord is not a real high end cord, so there's going to be a lot of resistance here. So this should load this thing down and make it draw maximum power, which it is. And the wires are getting hot. I can't hold them. <laughs> It did a pretty good job there and uh, didn't do any damage to it, it looks like. 1.5 amps. Ow, I can't hold the wires. It's going to burn my fingers here if I'm not careful. Now this wire itself won't pass any more current than that because the wires are just too darn thin. So let's make up a new uh, uh, cable and we'll actually put this under full load. I'll cut it so that I can use this part if I need to make up something because I got lots of these we'll see how much uh, power can get through a cord like this looks like it's uh, wires are, are molded here there they are might be a little heavier wires than this other one a little bit a little bit heavier wires We'll see what type of uh, damage we can do on this one. We'll plug this one in here and short this together and see what type of current we can draw through this one. Oh, good. I just uh, knocked the thing down. Will it come back when I remove the short? And it says overload. <laughs> USB 2 was overloaded. So that's what happens if you short something out. Um, we'll put another resistive load on here that will try and take this thing up to its maximum and just see what it'll do. We'll try a 1.8 ohm load and see how much we're going to draw. Is it going to overload or not? Find out. 2.62 amps. There we go. This thing should get warm here. And we're still overloading. It's lighting up overload. So it, it goes to 2.62 amps and then it shows overload. So this time we'll put uh, 3.6 ohms on here. Okay, that's only drawing 1.37 amps. I'm gonna put uh, six 1.2 ohm resistors in series parallel. So each resistor in parallel will give me a 0.6 ohms. So 3.6 ohms in uh, series will give me 1.8 ohms approximately. A little bit more precision than the other 1.8 ohms, which was uh, a 5% resistor. This should get my current draw at around 2.6 amps. That's what I'm hoping anyway. Let's plug it in and see what it does. If we can get this thing to go on here, 2.5, okay. We're not going into an overload state now. So now we're at 2.56 ohms. This thing goes into overload if it hits 2.6, it'll shut down. So now we're at 2.54 amps into these resistors, which are going to start getting pretty warm, pretty quick here. And they are getting hot. They will probably start smoking before long. Oh, check this out. I've got these resistors hot enough that they're actually melting this solder. <laughs> Isn't 
Let's check that out. That is some serious heat. These resistors are over 700 degrees. Are probably pretty darn close to it. I can solder the wires together. I can solder the wires together just using the heat that they are producing. That's wild. That's uh, that's pretty good. Overload protection is passing. On my test, this is passing because I'm putting this thing to the absolute maximum drain. It's actually heating this wire up too. Uh, I'm putting this to the absolute maximum load and if I exceed that 2.6 amps it'll shut down immediately. And that's 2. Point, they rated it 2.4 per channel but as you can see it's still putting out full 5.1 volts at 2.4 or 2.54 amps well, as you can see, my resistors are nice, nice and toasty warm here. This is the original band color, brown, red, gold. Well, you can tell that they look almost brown, brown, gold, gold. Uh, the color is changing on the resistor bands here because I've got these things so hot. It's been going now for uh, several minutes, about 10 minutes now we've been running uh, with the power supply under full load into this resistive load. It's still drawing two and a half amps, as you can see, nothing has gone into overload. Uh, holding up very well. And I'm gonna give this one a two thumbs up pass because um, I was unable to blow it up even when I put a dead short on it. So that gives you an idea of how well this little unit is, is actually built. If I can't blow it up under full load like this and the thing keeps putting out full power, I don't think you'll have any issues running this to do what it's intended to do, charge your batteries. Time to pop the top and look under the hood and see how it's built. Ah, and it does, just like that, complete with the display. So here's the, uh, here's the works of this little unit now that I've destroyed it for you guys. Looks to be cool, very cool. It's um, all surface mounted components, of course. Here's the bottom side of the board. Let's get a closer view of this thing. I like this, here's our spark gaps. We get some nice spark gaps on the board here in case of uh, in case of over voltage right there's our spark gaps we've got a transformer isolation on this so it's not just a simple capacitor dropper we've actually got a full transformer here and here's our, our charge regulators here our charge regulator and current and over current protection our measurement circuits down inside here. Everything's all kind of glued together. It's got two 22 microfarad 400 volt main filter capacitors here on the AC side. They are Asus, A A A A she brand? I don't know. 105 degree. Here's the switching regulator side, the chopper. And of course our control IC, our display up here is our, our power button, control button, and our two USB outputs. 1000 microfarad 6.3 volt are the secondary filters. There's the little display. And the bottom side of the board. Looks like they're making their own board, but hey, it looks good. I don't see any fault here. Soldering looks okay on here. Got two amp fuse right here. Looks like this is, might be a self resetting fuse, but it's a two amp.
yeah, it doesn't look bad. Now the question is, can I get this thing back together? Now that I've ripped it all to pieces, am I going to be able to put this thing back together and actually have it work? That's the big question here. I don't even know which way this board goes in, so I guess I'll have to try and power this thing up to see which way the display faces on here. And electrocute myself at the same time. And yeah, it goes up like that. Nice little lit display. At least this way, the power supply is going to run down those capacitors, so I don't have to worry about zapping myself when I uh, put it back together. It's going to go in kind of like this. Get the display lined up there. I guess it slides down in the front here first. And then the whole board just slides in here alongside it. like that. Ah, it did go back together. Now I just have to uh, get some glue and glue this thing back together and I'll have myself my charger and you guys have seen what the inside looks like. I think this one's a winner. What do you guys think? I think this one's a winner. This looks really well built and well we put it through the test. We tried to overload it and see what would happen and well we know what happens. It shuts down. Puts out uh, they, they, you know, they say 2.4 amps, but I was drawing 2.5 amps, 2. Point, what what was I drawing for 2.5 something, but it shuts down at 2.6, so anyway, um, there it is, uh, nice little unit, I think it's a pretty good price for what it is, links in the description, thanks for watching, we'll catch you again in the next one real soon.